Welcome to The Brad Link, your home for expert wedding planning advice. Today we're giving you tips all about hair and makeup on your wedding day. The first tip I have is before your wedding day and before you even hire your beauty pros, you need to talk with your bridesmaids and wedding party about who's specifically going to pay for those services. The typical rule is if you make it mandatory for hair and makeup to be professionally done, you're going to have to pay for it yourself. However, if you decide to make it optional where your bridesmaids could opt in to having hair or makeup done, they would be expected to pay for it. Making sure that the, your bridesmaids understand this, not only before your wedding day, but before you even hire your beauty pro can save you a lot of money, especially if somebody backs out. Usually there's a contract and there's not necessarily going to be any refunds or an expectation of getting paid less on the day of the wedding if you decide or one of your bridesmaids decide that they're not going to get their hair and makeup done. You're still going to have to foot the bill. So have an honest conversation with your bridesmaids beforehand about how much it's going to cost, who's going to pay for it, and if you can, go ahead and collect all of the money up front. That way payment is going to be smooth and easy on your wedding day. The next tip is let your bridesmaids know there's going to be an early start. Even if you have a ceremony at 5 or 6 in the evening, you're going to have photography beforehand. And if there's a large wedding party or maybe only one or two stylists on your beauty team, it can be an early morning start even for a 6 p.m. ceremony. Make sure that they understand that there's a pecking order and also that they're going to have to be on time for whatever time their hair and makeup starts and ready so hair and makeup can be on time throughout the day. Next, you want to make sure that you have plenty of outlets. Wherever you're getting ready, your hair and makeup artist is going to need to plug in things like curling irons and an airbrush machine, and more than likely your wedding party is going to want to have access to outlets to do things like charge their phones if you're going to be there all day. While you're making sure you have plenty of outlets, go ahead and make sure that you have plenty of space. Countertop space can be key. Hotel rooms are not always a great place to get ready because it doesn't allow for a lot of mirror space or good lighting. Be aware of not only lighting, but countertop space and space to put your items and where people can sit whenever you're looking at a bridal suite for getting ready. Also, you want to make sure that you have plenty of time. One of the worst things that can happen is hair and makeup runs behind, then photography runs behind, and then the ceremony starts late. It's happened before because there wasn't enough time allocated in the beginning, and you need to make sure that you pad time. In case anything runs over or goes wrong, you're still on time if you plan for extra time. Next, you want to make sure that everybody is actually ready when it's their turn for hair and makeup to start. So this would include things like having dry hair. It's really hard to curl hair if it's still slightly damp and they didn't blow dry it all the way. Having a clean face with no makeup on it already. Not eating. If you're in the middle of eating a bagel, it's really hard to apply your makeup. And then also you need to make sure that your beauty pros have time to prep their work. Things like laying out all of their tools and heating up their curling irons can take some time for them to be ready to start on time. Next is we recommend getting dressed at the end. So keep your beautiful sparkly dress, especially your white wedding gown, out of the way of all the hair and makeup. You don't want to get a lot of makeup on it or hairspray or creases from sitting throughout the day. So go ahead and get cute little robes or a button-down shirt so that way everybody can get their hair and makeup done and get dressed into their fancy dress right before photography. Next is be aware of when the bride is getting her hair and makeup done. A lot of people will try to put the bride last because they say they want their makeup to be fresh. But if you're hiring a beauty pro, a professional, I would expect for your makeup to look great all day long. That's really an expectation and that's what you're paying for. Also, if you're going to go last and you run behind, you're late and there's nothing you can do about it. Making sure that you have plenty of time to be ready before photography is key. If you have to bump a bridesmaid to the end so you can get your hair and makeup done and start your bridal detail photos on time, that's going to be imperative. So look at your pecking order of when people are doing hair and makeup and make sure there's enough time, especially for the bride, to be ready and plenty of time for the day of. Next, trial runs can be key. Of course, a hair and makeup artist is going to want to make sure that the day of your wedding, you're 110% happy with the way your hair and makeup looks. But there's not always going to be time during a wedding day for a complete redo. I'm sure they'll absolutely tweak things as needed, but to start over can be a really big time crunch throughout the day. 
Having a trial run can make sure that you talk through everything about your beauty the day of, that your hair and makeup artist is familiar with things like how your hair is, how long it is, is it coarse, is it thin, does it curl easily, does it hold hairspray well, and they can have a lot more of a laid back conversation with you instead of a stressful wedding day when you might already be under a time crunch. If you have time for a trial run, go ahead and do it. You'll be happy that you did. And finally, remember to tip your beauty pros. There's a few different categories where tips are almost expected because it's an industry norm. Hair and makeup would be one of those. So when you're quoted for certain services, you can ask up front if gratuity is included or if it should be extra added on top. But I would expect no matter what to go ahead and pay gratuity. For more expert wedding planning advice, follow us at The Bradley.